Welcome to lecture 23 on measure and integration. In the previous lecture, we had started looking at the space of Lebesgue integrable functions on the interval a b. We had defined the notion of L 1 metric on it and we had proved that under the L 1 metric, um, L 1 a b is a complete metric space. Uh, we will continue the study of this uh, space L 1 a b a bit more and today we will uh, show that um, the space of continuous functions on the interval a b is dense inside the space uh, of uh, integrable functions under the L 1 metric. So, let us just recall uh, the proof the of the fact that uh, the space L 1 a b under the L 1 metric is complete. So, uh, we defined uh, the notion of uh, L 1 metric as follows for the functions f and g in uh, L 1 of a b uh, we define the distance between f and g to be the L 1 norm of f minus g. Uh, so, this um, uh, 1 indicates uh, uh, what is called the L 1 norm uh, which we had defined last time. So, L, so this is precisely equal to uh, the L 1 norm or the distance between f and g is equal to uh, integral of mod of f minus g uh, d lambda over the interval a b. And we showed uh, that if you identify functions almost everywhere, that means if you do not distinguish between functions f and g which are equal almost everywhere on L 1 of a b, then this becomes a metric and the space L 1 a b is a complete metric space under this metric. Now, I just want to uh, go through the over the proof uh, main steps of the proof once again uh, to emphasize something uh, important uh, as follows. So, let us uh, go through the steps again to show that uh, this L 1 of a b is complete, what we have to show is given a Cauchy sequence f n in L 1 of a b, we have to show that there exists a function f in L 1 of a b uh, such that f n uh, converges to f in the L 1 norm. So, to do that we said uh, it is enough to show that uh, to show that the Cauchy sequence f n converges in L 1 metric, it is enough to show that there is a subsequence uh, of uh, f n which is convergent in L 1. So, this is a general fact about metric spaces namely uh, in any metric space given a Cauchy sequence, a Cauchy sequence converges if and only if there exists a subsequence of it which is convergent. So, this is the fact about metric spaces we are going to use here. So, to prove that uh, L 1 of a b is complete given the Cauchy sequence f n we will try to construct a subsequence of uh, f n which is convergent in L 1 norm. So, as a first step using the Cauchyness property of f n, we construct a subsequence f n k of f n such that the L 1 norm of f n minus f n j uh, is less than 1 over 2 to the power j for n bigger than or equal to n j. And this was done basically the Cauchyness says that the distance between f n and f m goes to 0 as n and m go to infinity. So, after some stage the difference between f n and f m can be made as small as you want. So, by using induction we construct this subsequence say that f n minus f n j uh, L 1 norm is less than 1 over 2 to the power j. So, the what we wanted to note down that in this uh, step 1 we have not used anywhere the fact that we uh, the functions are defined over the interval a b or real line we just use uh, a general fact about Cauchy sequences. In step 2, we said that the look at the Cauchy sequence f n k that we have just constructed, this has the property that the L 1 norm summation of the L 1 norms of f n 1 that is the first term plus the consecutive difference is the norm of f n j plus 1 minus f n j uh, is a convergent series. This follows from step 1 because uh, in the step 1 the difference between f n and f n j. So, f n n plus 1 j minus f n j is less than 1 over 2 to the power j. So, that clearly uh, says that this sum uh, of the norms uh, will be less than 1 over summation 1 over 2 to the power j which is finite. So, again uh, this follows from step 1 and we are not using anywhere the fact that our sequence is uh, our underlying uh, space is the real line or the interval. And now in step 3 we want you to conclude that the uh, function f n 1 x plus summation of f n j plus 1 x minus f n j x exists almost everywhere. And if you recall the proof of uh, this uh, was from the fact uh, using the 
series form of the Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem. Namely, whenever you are given a series of uh, L 1 functions and if the L 1 norms are finite, then the functions uh, series itself is convergent almost everywhere. So, again here we do not use the fact uh, that uh, we are over the real line. So, this step 3 also is valid and hence as a consequence of that theorem of Lebesgue uh, dominated convergence theorem in the series form, we get that f is L 1 and the L 1 norm or uh, L 1 uh, and the integral of f is equal to integral of some of the corresponding integrals. And uh, as a consequence of this, it follows that f, con f and j converges to f in L 1. So, the what we are saying is in all these uh, steps, we have not uh, used anywhere the fact that we are working over the real number system. So, uh, this proof carries over uh, to any um, measure space, complete measure space x s mu uh, and that means, we can replace the real line by any set x and the sigma algebra of Lebesgue measurable sets by uh, a sigma algebra of subsets of x so, and a measure mu such so that x s mu is a complete measure space and uh, we can define the space of uh, mu integrable functions, we can define L 1 of x, uh, the space of integrable functions and uh, the notion of the L 1 norm makes sense for any function f uh, on the measures on the space x. Uh, if it is mu integrable, we can define the L 1 norm of this. So, what we are saying is that the L 1 norm makes sense uh, on uh, uh, makes sense for any uh, L 1 metric makes sense for any uh, uh, on the space of Lebesgue on the space of integrable functions on any measure space x s mu which is complete. And as we have seen just now in the proof of the theorem, we do not use anywhere the fact that we are over the real line, we use general uh, statements about metric spaces or we use the uh, series uh, form of the Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem. So, as a result, I am saying that the same proof which we have worked out that saying L 1 of a b is complete works very well for the space L 1 of x s mu, where x s mu is any uh, measure space. So, that gives us the Ries Fisher theorem for a complete measure space x s mu saying that the space of integrable functions on a complete measure space under the L 1 metric is always complete. And as a, so that is one observation and now let us go over to the fact we wanted to prove that L 1 a b which is complete is in fact the completion of the space R a b of Riemann integrable functions on a b. So, for to do that what we we have already observed that R a b is a subset of L 1 of a b. We had proved the theorem that any function which is Riemann integrable is also Lebesgue integrable and the Riemann integral is same as the Lebesgue integral. So, R a b is a subset of L 1 of a b, L 1 of a b is complete to show that this is the completion of R a b, we want to show that R a b is a dense subset of L 1 of a b in the L 1 metric. So, the denseness of R a b is to be proved in L 1 of a b. In fact, we will prove something uh, much uh, stronger. Remember that every continuous function on the interval a b is also Riemann integrable. So, the space C a b of continuous functions on the interval a b is a subset of the space of Riemann integrable functions and we will show that C a b itself is dense in L 1 of a b. That means, for any function f in L 1 of a b and any uh, number epsilon bigger than 0, we want to show that there exists a function g belonging to C a b a continuous function such that the norm of f minus g is less than epsilon. So, that will prove that C a b is complete in L 1 of a b. So, we will do it in uh, steps. Step 1 is that given that function f in L 1 of a b, which we want to approximate by a continuous function, it is enough to prove the theorem for functions in L 1 a b such that f is bigger than or f is a non negative. And that is because if f belongs to L 1 of a b, then we know that f can be written as f plus the positive part minus the negative part of the function. And f belongs to L 1 of a b if and only if both f plus and f minus belong to L 1 of a b. So, in case, so if 
non negative functions in L 1 of a b can be approximated. So, if there exists a function g 1 belonging to C a b and a function g 2 belonging to C a b continuous functions such that the norm of f plus minus the continuous function g 1 l 1 norm is less than epsilon and norm of f minus g 1 is also less than epsilon, then this will imply that the norm of f minus g 1 minus g 1 minus g 2 l 1 which will be equal to norm of f plus minus f minus minus g 1 g 2 and that will be less than or equal to norm of f plus minus g 1 plus norm of using the triangle inequality property of the norm. So, f minus minus g 2 and that will be less than epsilon plus epsilon. So, we will have a. So, if we call this function as g. So, what we are saying is that if non negative uh, functions in L 1 can be approximated by continuous functions, then any function f in L 1 can be approximated because f can be split as a difference of two non negative functions in L 1. So, this is uh, step 1 namely that uh, it is enough uh, to prove the theorem for functions which are uh, integrable and which are non negative. So, this is the first observation that showing that C a b is dense in L 1 of a b, we can assume that the function f in L 1 a b is a non negative function. So, there is a first simplification or a first step. The second step says that for a non negative function f in L 1 a b. So, observation is that for a non negative integrable function, there exists a non negative simple measurable functions in L 1 a b such that the norm of f minus s is less than epsilon. So, what we are saying is that if f is a non negative integrable function, then it can be approximated by a non negative simple measurable function uh, which is integrable integrable. So, uh, let us prove this step how does we do that. So, we are given that f is non negative and f belongs to L 1 of a b. Now, because f is non negative and it is integrable, so f is non negative measurable. So, f bigger than or equal to 0, f measurable implies there exists a sequence S n of non negative simple measurable functions, simple measurable functions such that S n increases to f, but then S n is less than or equal to f and all are non negative. So, that implies that S n also belongs to L 1 of a b. So, because S n is dominated by f, they are non negative functions. So, that implies as we have seen earlier that S n also belong, will belong to L 1 of a b and also because S n is increasing to f. So, integral of f d mu can be written as limit n going to infinity integral of S n d mu. Right? That is by the definition of the integral for a non negative measurable function the integral is the limit of the approximating sequence of non negative simple uh, measurable functions. But note that each S n integral of S n is less than or equal to integral of f. So, we can write that actually as in absolute value of f n mi um, f minus S n d mu that will be equal to integral of f d mu minus integral of S n d mu, because f minus S n is non negative. So, it is absolute value is same as f minus S n. So, and that integral is equal to this and that goes to 0. So, that means, we have got a sequence of simple measurable functions, non negative simple measurable functions which are in L 1 and the. So, this is L 1 norm. So, uh, integral of mod s um, integral of mod f minus s n goes to 0 that means the norm of f minus s n l 1 norm goes to 0. 
So, once it happens, so that means for any epsilon, we can choose a n naught such that f minus s n naught will be less than epsilon. So, implies for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a n naught such that norm of f minus s n naught will be less than epsilon. So, that proves uh, the second step that close to a integrable function f which is non negative, there is uh, a non negative simple measurable function close to it close in the sense of L 1 norm. So, as step 3, so that means what? That means, in order to approximate f by a continuous function, we can approximate, we can, it is enough to approximate non negative simple measurable functions in L 1 by a continuous function, because f can be approximated by a simple non negative simple measurable function in L 1 and if non negative simple measurable function can be approximated, then we will be through. So, what we have shown till now is that the non negative simple measurable functions in L 1 are dense in L 1, that itself is of interest, a result of, in, of interest is independent result of interest. That means, for integrable functions, the non, -neg uh, the non negative simple functions are dense close to it and using positive negative part, this will give you that in the space of L 1 of a b, if you look at the simple integrable functions, they are dense in L 1 norm. So, for us our theorem, so it is enough to prove that for a simple non negative simple integrable function L 1 of a b, there exists a function g continuous function close to it. So, that is what we have to prove to prove the our theorem. So, let us uh, we have got a simple s which is simple integrable non negative function. So, that means what? That means, this s will look like sigma a i indicator function of sets a i, i equal to some 1 to n, because it is simple non negative. So, a i s will be bigger than or equal to 0 and this sets a i s are subsets of a b. Of course, they are Lebesgue measurable, they are disjoint. So, a i intersection a j is empty and the union of a i is, is equal to a b i equal to 1 to n. So, saying that s is a non negative uh, function which is um, non negative simple measurable function which is in L 1. So, non negative simple means it is of this type and uh, obviously, this becomes integrable. So, this must be of this form. Right. So, what we want to show is that to show there exists a continuous function g on a b such that norm of s minus g is less than epsilon. So, this is what we have to show. Now, s is a linear combination of indicator functions of a i. So, our claim is that enough to show enough to show. So, to prove that this claim, it is enough to show that for every a inside a b, of course, a Lebesgue measurable, a Lebesgue measurable, there exists a function g, which is a c a b, such that the L 1 norm of the indicator function of a minus g is less than epsilon saying this is enough, because if, if this is true for every i. So, the reason is because if true, then what we will do for every i we will approximate the indicator function of a i. So, for every i, so for every i find g i belonging to c a b such that the L 1 norm of uh, the indicator function of a i minus g i is less than epsilon. So, we will do that for every i equal to 1 to up to n. Then, this will imply that if I define g to be equal to sigma a i of g i, 
a i times the function g i, then this function will is a continuous function because it is a finite linear combination of uh, continuous function. So, this is a continuous function and the L 1 norm of uh, sigma a i 1 to n of indicator function of a i minus this g and this is s. So, the norm of s minus g L 1 norm will be less than or equal to sigma mod a i norm of L 1 norm of indicator function of a i minus g i. So, that is by triangle inequality okay, where g is a sum of six sigma a i g i. So, I can uh, say it is less than or equal to absolute value 1 to n of mod a i times this and each one of them. So, this is less than sigma i equal to 1 to n mod a i and this each one of them is less than epsilon. So, it is less than this which is uh, a small quantity. So, we can modify this epsilon uh, suitably. So, we will have that if. So, the what we are saying is to prove that for every non negative simple measurable function s there is a continuous function g close to it in the L 1 metric. It is enough to show that for every indicator function of a set a uh, in uh, L 1 in um, a b there is a function continuous function close to it. So, that is what we have to prove. So, let us uh, do that. So, so let a be a subset of a b and a Lebesgue measurable to show there is a continuous function close to it. So, for that uh, to prove that uh, let us uh, make a observation here to, sh uh, to show that there exists a continuous function g close to that. So, that means c of a b such that norm of indicator function of a minus g is less than epsilon. So, this is what we have to show. So, for that let us observe one thing. So, note which you can call it as a lemma which we have already proved uh, while dealing with the Lebesgue measure, but let us recall the proof of this once again that look at the Lebesgue measure of the set A. A is a subset of A B. So, it is a finite quantity and the Lebesgue measure what is it equal to Lebesgue measure of the set A because A is Lebesgue measurable it is same as the Lebesgue outer measure of A by definition and that is equal to the infimum of given the set A cover it by disjoint intervals i j some finite number of them i j is are pairwise disjoint. And look at the sums of these intervals lengths of these intervals i j 1 to infinity and take the infimum of all such things. So, lambda star of A which is same as the Lebesgue measure of A is nothing but the infimum of the sums of the lengths of those intervals i j s which cover a and we can assume that they are pairwise disjoint. So, that is what is uh, being uh, that is the definition and now this being finite because it is inside a b. So, implies for every epsilon bigger than 0 I can find intervals i n s there exist intervals i n belonging uh, i n s intervals n equal to 1, 2 and so on such that the set A is contained in union of i n s n equal to 1 to infinity and i n s are pairwise disjoint. So, i n intersection i m is equal to empty and it is a infimum. So, I can make lambda of lambda star of A which is same as lambda of A plus epsilon should be bigger than summation of uh, sorry uh, lambda of a plus epsilon cannot be the infimum. So, that must be uh, bigger than summation of lambda of i n s right. So, that is by the definition that lambda star of a or lambda of a is the infimum of certain things. So, lambda of a plus epsilon cannot be the infimum. So, th it must be bigger than some uh, terms over which you are taking the infimum. So, this is true. So, that means and this is finite. 
So, that implies, so here is the observation that this sigma lambda of i n s n equal to 1 to infinity is finite, right? Because lambda star of a which is lambda of a which is finite is inside a b. So, this is finite. So, we can choose. So, this is a series which is convergent, we can choose a stage say n naught such that the sum from n naught plus 1 to infinity of lambda i n is small. So, let us say it is less than uh, say again epsilon. Okay. So, now define. So, then let us look at uh, the set a minus union i n n equal to 1 to n naught. Look at uh, this. So, this is a subset of a is contained in. So, recall a is contained in the union of i n s. So, I can say this is subset of union of n equal to 1 to infinity of i n s because a is contained in this minus union n equal to 1 to n naught of i n s. Uh, but that means this is equal to union of i n s n equal to n naught plus 1 to infinity. So, this is set the same as this. So, that implies by the sub additive property that lambda of a minus the union of the intervals i n from 1 to n naught will be less than summation of lambda i n n equal to n naught plus 1 to infinity and that we know is less than. So, here is the property 1. So, by 1 uh, this is less than epsilon. So, the difference of the measure Lebesgue measure of the difference of a minus this finite union of disjoint intervals is less than epsilon. Also, say so look at the sets uh, union of 1 to n naught the intervals i n minus a that is contained in union of n equal to 1 to infinity i n because instead of n naught we will take it to infinity minus a and everything is finite. So, this implies all I got finite Lebesgue measure. So, this implies that the Lebesgue measure of union of i n s n equal to 1 to, inf, uh, inf, uh, 1 to n naught minus a. So, Lebesgue measure of this set will be less than or equal to uh, the Lebesgue measure of union of i n s n equal to 1 to infinity minus Lebesgue measure of a, which is equal to uh, summation less than or equal to summation of lambda of i n n equal to 1 to infinity minus lambda of a and that we know that we know is less than epsilon. Okay? Because that is how we constructed the sequence i n, i n's cover a and the difference between the summation of lambda i n's minus lambda of a is less than epsilon. So, we have got that the uh, Lebesgue measure of Lebesgue measure of a minus the finite uh, union of intervals 1 to n naught is less than epsilon and Lebesgue measure of the finite union minus a is less than epsilon. So, that together they imply that the Lebesgue measure of a symmetric difference between this set which is a finite union of intervals disjoint intervals 1 to n naught is less than 2 epsilon. So, to make things uh, look very nice what we could have done is given an epsilon we could have selected here when we got this uh, tail of the series we could have made it less than epsilon by 2 and in the beginning also when we got uh, when we took the outer measure being finite and covered by. So, we could have made that inequality less than epsilon by 2 in the starting itself. So, saying lambda of a is finite. So, there is a sequence of intervals covering say that lambda star of a plus epsilon by 2 instead of epsilon. Similarly, in the second one we also we could have made epsilon by 2. Then we would have gotten this as epsilon by 2 and we would have gotten this by epsilon by 2. So, we have gotten it epsilon. Now, that is only a cosmetic change in our proof, but the basic fact is what we are saying is. So, what we have shown is the following that if 
So, this is the important thing that we have shown. So, we have shown that if A is contained in A to B, given epsilon bigger than 0, there exists disjoint interval I 1 some I n naught such that the Lebesgue measure of the set A symmetric difference between this union of the intervals I n 1 to n naught is less than epsilon. So, this is this we had proved earlier also for general measures. So, I have repeated the proof for uh, the Lebesgue measure because uh, it is good to revise things anyway. So, using this, but now let us look at what does this statement last statement mean. That means, this thing is nothing but integral of the indicator function of A minus the indicator function of sets A i n s which are pairwise disjoint 1 to n naught absolute value of this. So, this quantity is precisely equal to this. So, what we are saying is the indicator function of A delta B is absolute value of indicator function of A minus indicator function of B. So, this is a general fact. So, I am using that here. So, Lebesgue measure of a set is the integral of the indicator function and the indicator function of the symmetric difference is the indicator function of the uh, difference of absolute value of the difference. So, that is less than epsilon. So, as a consequence what we are saying is that given a set A inside the interval A B, we can find finite number of disjoint intervals I n say that this property is true. Okay. But now, note that these are disjoint intervals. So, this is equal to the indicator function of A minus the summation indicator functions of I n s n equal to 1 naught and not d lambda. So, that is less than epsilon. So, what we have uh, proved that the uh, that if you look at the indicator function of a set A uh, inside the interval A B, then there are disjoint intervals I n such that the indicator function of A minus the sums of the indicator function of these intervals I n will be less than epsilon. Okay. And now, and we what we wanted to approximate so that so this is same as the L1 norm. So we have got the L1 norm of the indicator function of A minus the function which is a sum of the indicator functions of I n 1 to n naught that is less than epsilon the L1 norm. And what our aim was to approximate the indicator function of A by a continuous function, and we are saying that the indicator function of A is close to sum of indicator functions of intervals. So, what does that mean? That means, if I can approximate each one of these interval uh, functions which are indicator functions of intervals inside the interval A B and a finite number of them by a continuous function then I am through. So, the next uh, step is to show that. So, so, let us write it as further we claim that if i is a interval, if say i is a interval inside the interval a b, then there exists a continuous function g c a b such that with the property that norm of the indicator function of the interval i minus the continuous function is less than epsilon. So, once we are able to prove this fact, for each interval i n will have a continuous function, take the sums of those. So, they will approximate the sum of the indicator functions of the intervals and that in turn approximates the indicator function of A and our proof will be complete. So, what we want to show is that given a uh, interval inside. So, given the interval i, so here is A and here is B and we are given a interval inside it. So, I just want to draw a picture and show what is the proof going to be. So, here is the interval i inside it let us say it is c to d. Okay. So, the indicator function of a indicator function 
So, we have got uh, the indicator function of c to d. Okay. So, let us look at, so this is going to be the indicator function of, so this height is 1. Okay. So, let us just draw, this is 1. So, the indicator function of the interval c to d looks like it is 0 here in a to c and c to d it is going to be 1 and d to b it is going to be 0 again here. It does not matter what are the values at the point c and d. Now, we want to approximate this by a continuous function. So, and it is obvious what we should be doing to make this function continuous and such that the area below the graph of this function does not exceed too much. So, let us take a point here which is c minus 1 by n for any n and let us take a point here which is d plus 1 by n. So, take this point and now what we do is we so, take the function. So, I am going to define a function g n. What is the function g n? It is 0 in a to c minus 1 over n. In this portion, it is 0 and in the portion between c minus 1 over n to c, it is going to be the line joining. Okay. So, that is the line segment. So, I am describing the graph of this. So, the line segment and then it is 1 in the interval c to d. So, it is 1 in the interval c to d and then again from d where the discontinuity is coming, I join it by the point d plus 1 over n. So, it is again the line joining that between d plus 1 over uh, d to d plus 1 over n and 0 remaining. So, what I am saying is if you are given the uh, indicator function of a sub interval of a b, then I can always make it continuous. I can approximate by a continuous function. So, what will be the extra thing we will be adding? We will be adding the areas of these two rectangles. So, if I define this as a continuous function g n, then what is the L 1 difference? So, uh, the integral of mod of the indicator function of the interval i which is c to d minus this continuous function g n d lambda will be equal to the areas of these two rectangles. So, height is 1. So, it is 2 by n because each uh, triangle because this length is 1 by n this height is 1. So, half base into height. So, it is n by 2 actually. So, multiply by 1 by 2. So, that is 1 by n and that goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, that will prove the fact that close to the indicator function of, so that will prove the fact that the close to indicator function. So, close to the indicator function of an interval, there is a continuous function and hence close to the indicator function of any set inside the interval a b, there is a continuous function and that will and finite linear combinations of the indicator functions are the simple functions. So, that will prove the fact that for a non negative uh, simple function, there is a conti uh, continuous function close to it. So, step 4, which was that if uh, is a non negative simple function of this form, then close to it, right. So, this is a linear combination. So, so indicator function a i chi a i, I am just repeating the last step again. So, because each one of them can be approximated. If each one of them can be indicator function of intervals can be approximated, then the simple function can be approximated. So, the problem came to uh, approximating indicator functions of sets inside the interval a b and for that we said we will use a lemma which says that given epsilon bigger than 0, there exists a set f inside a b which is a finite disjoint union of uh, intervals say so that the Lebesgue measure of asymmetric difference f is less than epsilon. So, using that uh, we will get that uh, indicator function of a minus the indicator function of this set f which is a finite disjoint union of intervals and so problem reduces to approximating indicator functions of intervals inside the given interval a b and for that we just uh, extrapolate by piecewise linear functions and get uh, the required thing. So, indicator function of a interval, there is a continuous function close to it. So, for that we just now said 
look at the graph of uh, so here is a to b okay so look at some point close to it c minus 1 over n or c minus 2 by n and take this linear piecewise linear function which is a continuous function and that will approximate in l1 norm the given function the indicator function of a interval so that will prove uh, the fact namely that close to l1 function there is a continuous function i just want to discuss the proof of this theorem in in effect we have almost used all the results uh, on measures and on integration that we have proved till now so and this is the technique which we use to prove things about uh, integrable functions so what we wanted to show was that given a given a function f which is integrable on the interval ab there is a continuous function on the interval ab such that the l1 norm of the difference is small that means every integrable function on the interval ab can be approximated by a continuous function so what was the first step of our uh, uh, first step in our proof was that since every function f can be written as the positive part minus the negative part and f integrable implies if and only if the positive part and the negative part are integrable and we want to approximate f by a continuous function which is a difference of two non negative integrable functions f plus and f minus and if we can approximate each one of them separately then we can combine them to approximate the function f so the first step was namely we can assume without any loss of generality that our integrable function is non negative that is one so once so the next step is so if we take the function f to be non negative and integrable how is the integral of non negative functions defined they are defined by looking at limits of increasing sequences of simple measurable functions and taking their integrals so we go back to the definition of integral of a non negative function so f non negative integrable implies f is non negative measurable so as a consequence by the definition there exists a sequence of non negative simple measurable functions such that call that as sn say that the sequence sn of simple non negative simple measurable functions increases to the function f but if sn is increasing to f that means sn is less than or equal to f and f is non negative so that implies each sn is non negative and integrable so sn is a sequence of simple non negative integrable functions on the interval ab and the in integral of sn increases to integral of f that means that is equivalent to saying that sn converges to f in l1 norm so given f a non negative integrable function we have a sequence of non negative simple integrable functions in converging to it in the l1 norm so this is a fact that simple functions in l1 fab are dense but we want to go a step further so look at a simple function now so to approximate f which is non negative we have got a sequence of simple functions converging to it in l1 that means close to f which is non negative integrable there is a simple integrable function so if you can integrate if we can approximate simple non negative simple uh, uh, integrable functions by a continuous function then we are through but a non negative simple function is a finite linear combination non negative linear combination of indicator functions of sets okay so and if we can approximate each indicator function by a continuous function then the corresponding linear combination of those continuous functions will approximate the simple function so the next step is that to show that close uh, simple uh, integrable functions can be approximated by a continuous function it is enough to show that the indicator function of a set a inside ab is uh, can be approximated by a continuous function so it comes down to saying that look at a set a which is lebesgue measurable inside the interval ab and we want to approximate the indicator function of this set by a continuous function and 
here comes the property of the Lebesgue measure that the Lebesgue measure of a set A inside A B that means, it is a finite uh, uh, set of finite Lebesgue measure. We can approximate this set by finite disjoint union of intervals and what does that approximation mean? It means that given a set A inside the interval A B which is Lebesgue uh, measurable there exists a set which is a finite disjoint union of intervals such that the Lebesgue measure of the set A and the symmetric difference of this finite disjoint union is small is less than say epsilon. And, but saying that the uh, Lebesgue measure of the symmetric difference A uh, with a finite disjoint union is small is same as saying that the L 1 norm of the indicator function minus the difference between the L 1 norm of the indicator function and the linear combination of the indicator functions of those disjoint intervals is small. And we want to approximate the indicator function by a continuous function. So, and close to it is a finite linear combination of indicator functions of intervals. So, the problem reduces to approximating the indicator function of an interval inside the given interval a b by a continuous function and that is achieved by uh, just piece wise uh, making the uh, uh, indicator function piece wise linear. So, this is the step uh, in effect we have used uh, almost all the theory in proving this theorem. So, that theorem proves that C A B is dense. So, that proves the fact that C A B is dense in L 1 of A B and C A B is a subset of R A B. So, that will prove that R A B is dense in L 1 of A B and hence as the result we get that L 1 of A B is the completion of uh, uh, the space of R A B of, of course, of C A B. So, that proves the uh, theorem. So, very important uh, uh, result that L 1 of uh, any interval a, a b is complete and as we observed L 1 of any subset also will be complete uh, if you look at the proof and uh, it is a completion of R a b. Let us look at some more properties of uh, these functions. So, let us look at uh, let us look at uh, a function f in L 1 of r. So, f is an integrable function for real numbers h and k let us define f h f lower h of x namely equal to f of x plus h. So, the value of this new function f lower h at x is the val value of f at the translated point x plus h. So, this we call as a translation of the function f and similarly let us define the function phi which is defined as phi of x to be f of k times x plus h for any x that means, you multiply the number x by k and add h to it translate and then take the value of this. So, claim is both these functions f h and phi are uh, again integrable and the integral of this function phi is absolute value of k times the integral of f and the integral of the translated function f h is same as the integral of the original function f. So, that means, the space L 1 if we make a translation or a magnification then these are again leave the functions in the space L 1 and with these properties. So, these can be easily proved on the lines that we have proved just now. So, let us try to prove that integral of f h x d lambda x is equal to integral of f x d lambda x. So, let us, so we want to prove for every f in L 1. So, again we will be using that simple function technique. So, we want to prove for every f in L 1. Okay. So, note we can assume, so step 1 show true for f non negative. So, it is true for f non negative okay. because once it is true for f non negative I can look at the positive part and the negative part. Okay. So, first show it is for and how do you show it is true for non negative. So, step 2 
so true for a simple function s belonging to L 1 s 1 s non negative simple because every function can be approximated by uh, non negative simple functions and non negative simple functions are indicator functions of sets. So, step 3 show that show for f equal to the indicator function show for indicator function and what is that? That means, we want to show that lambda. So, indicator function of a x plus h d x d lambda x is equal to integral of indicator function of a d lambda, but that is same as saying showing that lambda of a plus h or a minus h does not matter is equal to lambda of a for every h and that is the property of the Lebesgue measure that it is translation invariant. So, what we are saying is this property is true for indicator functions. So, it will be true for non negative simple functions. So, by taking limits it will be true for non negative integrable functions and then by positive and negative part it will be true for all functions in L 1. Okay. And a similar result will work for uh, second inequality, second uh, identity namely if I multiply. So, f of k x let us just look at d lambda x is equal to mod k times mod f of uh, of uh, f of uh, mod k times f of uh, x d lambda x. So, that again by the same technique let us look at what happens when it is an indicator function. So, lambda of multiplication k times a set e what is it equal to and we look at this via outer measures one can show that this is same as mod k times lambda of e. So, you show it for for all sets e which are Lebesgue measurable then this is equal to the indicator function and then finite linear combination of indicator functions and so on. So, urge the reader to verify this by the simple function technique. So, these are properties of uh, Lebesgue integrable functions. So, what we have done is that we specialized the space of integrable functions on the real line and deduce some nice properties and one of the properties was that the space of Riemann integrable functions is dense in the space of Lebesgue integrable functions. And uh, so, in one sense this is very nice and uh, so, as in the so this completes the process of uh, extension of measures and defining integrals with respect to measures and their properties. Uh, in the next uh, few lectures, we will start looking at how does one construct what are called product measure spaces and how does one integrate um, on product measure spaces. So, this is an important uh, part of measure theory that, that means, measure and integrations on product spaces. We will start looking at in the next lecture. Thank you.